and I'm the People and Organizations Program Manager. I'd like to welcome you to the School of Business Executive Education, People and Organizations after COVID-19 webinar. In order to have a smooth streaming, please keep your mics and videos off. We will park all your questions towards the end of the session, so please send them to me through the chat box. If you cannot hear us at any time, uh, you will have to reconnect, but I'm not sure whether you will be admitted inside the room again or not. Now, I would like to introduce our great spe our guest speaker, Mr. George Samain. Mr. George is the Talent Development Manager at Novo Nordisk and a Dale Carnegie trainer with more than 20 years of business experience. And he will be leading our last webinar in this series. George, welcome to our webinar today. And it's a pleasure having you talking about this very exciting topic. George. Uh, I'm very sorry, we are facing a bit of internet connection problems uh, this afternoon. George, can you hear us? Um, uh, Mr. George had faced a simple problem and he's reconnecting now and he's going to be with us in two minutes. business and people organization through COVID-19 and after. Um, so let's sail our journey in it. Um, as we mentioned, um, before getting into something, let's put it on the table. These are the objectives uh, of our discussion. We need to see how the business is on now after COVID-19. Uh, and the, as they say, business before COVID, after COVID-19 will be by all means not as the business after. Definitely, we need to know our learned lessons as a people and organization people. Uh, HR, it's a different, uh, it's um, the dimension of uh, people and organization and learned les lessons in COVID-19. And I believe by the end, um, we as professionals, uh, P, uh, P and O professionals, we need to stand there and to think of it, of our strategy for the coming period, uh, whether uh, in COVID-19 uh, or after COVID-19, which is very close to us. I'll, let's put on the table something first. No one knows anything. Uh, I quote, uh, Peter Pyatt. Peter Pyatt is the virolo uh, virology council for the European uh, com uh, commu uh, European Commissioner. Uh, this guy he is uh, he's recovering by himself from 
COVID-19 infection. And he said this word, which I quote very much, we learn while we are sailing. But we can see some trends that are upcoming there. First of all, the energy. Um, we could see the hit to the oil and gas industry with all its reflection on business, uh, as what happened in April 21st when uh, uh, people were buying oil for the sake of relieving the stress on the producer, on uh, on the excuse me on the storage, and also so that we can push some money for, for the producers. Uh, definitely now it's starting and it will continue furthermore more capitalization and more investment uh, in the alternative energy solar energy be it uh, nuclear energy but maybe more solar because it's more clean uh, some estimates says that the major player key players in the industry of oil and gas may push their investment uh, in the alternative energy from 0.1% to 1% of their income. Second thing, definitely our, uh, like our language now, it's digitalization. Digitalization um, was a trend that started before with the development of every virtual thing. Uh, and COVID-19 pushed all the plans on the double. Uh, like, uh, and, we came up with a, word, with a quote that I like, which says that what went digital will not get back to physical. This includes definitely banking, like uh, FinTech is now on the double. Uh, actually, in, in Egypt, uh, the government is moving very much into a lot of payments um, via internet. Uh, healthcare, actually, uh, I could see uh, a uh, couple of a uh, couple of days a lot of healthcare providers are moving now into providing healthcare uh, to patients even covid-19 through apps through sensors uh, as it provides the social distancing and also it's uh, it's safe uh, it prevents infection and uh, on the other hand it provides the individualization of dealing with patients without getting exposed to other uh, items. This is a part of the digitalization that is inv invading everything. Even grocery. Uh, in early April, uh, uh, Amazon, they opened their uh, wait list for online grocery, uh, as a lot of people are ordering grocery. Now it's a bit uh, getting uh, slow, but in March, actually, uh, when the states, and actually part of the states now is in lockdown um, in March, people used to order gro grocery online. Um, this is another thing that uh, uh, that will started and now will go after in COVID, uh, after COVID-19, people will continue online, whether uh, receiving um, healthcare services, whether banking, uh, Actually, COVID-19 pushed a lot of people to change their trends, especially what we call digital old generations, uh, to be more courageous in dealing with, uh, with, digital, uh, with digital platforms. And I believe it will continue, especially um, uh, with the easiness that the digitalization provides and also the social distancing, which is the main preventive measure agreed upon from uh, before and also uh, after uh, after the sub uh, the remission of uh, COVID-19, I believe um, it will continue as it will ease a lot of people's life doing a lot of tasks in the same time. Uh, definitely, government service government service as I've just mentioned before, um, due to the lockdown, a lot of governments uh, capitalized very much on. Uh, putting their government service uh, on, more online. And I believe it will continue and continue because uh, it keeps, uh, firstly, it will help a lot of service. And I believe in Egypt, it will relieve the government uh, sector from a lot of workers who uh, were actually a dilemma for the government to deal with. Uh, uh, definitely how the government will deal with those people 
when the online will get more established after the COVID-19, this will be another dilemma. But with this will be a part of the, this is also a part of the mosaic of after COVID-19. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, the cherry or, or the main cake of the online is P&O uh, and uh, learning, uh, which we will get through to it. But uh, um, a lot of providers are shifting online. A lot of platforms are expanding. Um, uh, Zoom is expanding despite uh, with all the meetings and all the things, uh, the learning, which will continue after COVID-19, definitely. Uh, uh, as it's, it, it provides the digitalization in P&O, especially in learning, as we will get through, it provides more individualization. Um, this is the second the trend that is started, the business which started in COVID-19 and continue after. Firstly, energy, digitalization, and finally, people. Um, we found out in COVID-19, and it's getting more after COVID-19, that people are really valuable. The silly the sentence is, but this is uh, when tested, this is what's really uh, is proving right uh, that uh, we need our people for business. Um, we were thinking a couple of years back that one day uh, we will have the world will be such a big uh, control room with, with one guy uh, sitting there taking care of this control room and a dog, and the dog is preventing the guy from intervening uh, or interrupting the control room to do its part. It proved that uh, this is not right. We are in need of our people. Uh, and um, um, uh, it emphasizes the high value of people because with all uh, the effort that was put in digitalization, uh, organizations are capitalizing on uh, uh, remotely working teams. Uh, I think this will continue, um, especially that no one knows as we are talking now how COVID-19 will end and most probably it will continue but in different behaviors. Some people say that it will be in waves like increase at a time. Uh, so this is the COVID-19 season and after that uh, we can go to work. Uh, or people will say that we will live with and actually some governments uh, are um, working on scenarios how to cope with COVID-19. Amid all this, I believe uh, we valued uh, people through COVID-19 and how much uh, um, a corner part of people, which is their morale, affects the performance, which was apparent in companies which took care of their people through COVID-19 and how the company's performance, um, if if not minimally affected, uh, it, it is established its performance. I know a company, one of these companies which uh, locked down their people from the start, like early March, and how people appreciate this. And the company uh, ended Q1 with uh, high performance. Uh, I believe this will continue after because we now can see the value. We have a mature approach to uh, people. We can see how the value, how people are valuable, and at the same time, how they are a cornerstone of the business in the world. And this gets us to the to more deeper in look uh, of PNO and how it's uh, uh, and its role after COVID-19. Firstly, the implicit values. There was a culture theory that says that. Uh, there are three categories of the value for any organization. Firstly, the apparent value, which is what is written in the vision, mission, values of the organization. And there is the expressive value, which you could see when you visit the company, uh, where you can see the logo, the structure, um, how people are set, uh, whether open space or closed space, how people uh, approach the top management and stuff. And then there is the implicit value. What do we really apply? I believe after uh, COVID-19, workforce will be 100% sure of the implicit real values of their organization because this is what the organizations expressed through COVID-19. So for example, 
if I didn't take if an organization, which I, one of the organizations that I read about, didn't take care of people and due to decline in business, they got rid of their people. Um, in like in the, in the first touch, in the first hit, I believe this company after COVID-19 uh, will suffer from a decline performance even in people who are still working because people know, knew, know now that uh, their organizations d doesn't care for them, uh, do not care for, the, for them, sorry, and they are just part of the tool. And it's everything again about uh, people's performance, which no one can get from people except with the willingness of people. Second part, which will be uh, have will be affected after COVID-19, definitely the organizational structure with the, with the size of teams as uh, a lot of uh, speculation, sorry, and as I've just mentioned, um, working remotely will continue. If not, it will be established, uh, meaning that it will be uh, Maybe it's a normal trend that some organizations are thinking after COVID-19 that let's keep people who are, who can work and perform remotely, working remotely. Uh, and those who need to go to, uh, to work, uh, let, them, uh, let them go to work, like the production people, the, the warehouse, and those people who need to be inside. This, me, this reflects uh, definitely on the team size and uh, uh, a span of control, which is something that was underlooked before, where uh, small teams and uh, structuring organizations around small teams will be uh, preferred because it will help managers um, to manage these team, uh, those teams and keep them engaged uh, more. Uh, definitely this uh, working remotely will um, Will uh, after COVID nineteen will uh, will capitalize very much on the capabilities of managers. Um, uh, this means how much they can build the trust with their team members, and also their management and leadership capabilities uh, in managing these teams. Uh, second thing, it's centralization. Um, there is a lot of. Uh, before COVID-19, we were thinking of more of an autonomy. Uh, through COVID-19, the multinational organizations uh, whom had the centralized the crisis management plan uh, proved that um, they performed better than those who are autonomous or the plans were left to branches in different countries. And this, after COVID-19, will will direct us as p and o team um, people and organization teams to capitalize on a balanced approach to structure uh, structuring and designing our organizations keeping centralization and at the same time keeping teams um, autonomous uh, be, because uh, we in the uh, after covid 19 we need to fine tune the centralized plan according to the needs of each and every country and market. Definitely working remotely. Working remotely will affect a lot uh, the flattening of the organization as I've just mentioned. No more layers because a lot of layers will put a lot of weight on the shoulders of managers to manage all these layers and on the directors to keep all these layers engaged and communicated and connected. Uh, after, or uh, the point after is whom to hire. And actually it has two sides of it. Firstly, the implicit values, the values that the employees realized uh, about their organizations definitely were spread to the market, affecting the employer value proposition, what we call the uh, EVP. Uh, uh, which is simply how organizations are uh, viewed in the markets. Uh, and consequently, it will affect how much the workforce will be attracted to these organizations. From the other side, of the, from the hiring side, definitely 
we will have to think of uh, what we call a different package of skills that we need to, to, to seek uh, after COVID-19, which is online likeness skills. Simply, uh, uh, the skills or the competences that are related to working online. As you could see today in our session that uh, the network actually is not in Egypt, it's in all the countries that I performed and operated in. Uh, there is always an issue with the network and how to deal with it and how to have alternatives. Uh, even having a setting for an online meeting uh, uh, needs special skills, uh, keeping people engaged. Uh, actually, there is a lot of organizations um, um, training uh, development organizations that are now uh, capitalizing more on certifying trainers and instructors online. Uh, something else, um, a group of people that we used not to look to, which we call the pre-carry. Pre-carry is a term that is, that is for employers who we call precarious em employees or workforce. Those people who are not stable, uh, yet they, cont they contribute a major part of certain industries like construction. Those people who come to work uh, on a weekly wedge and stuff, because those people we need, after COVID-19, we, we need to take care of about in their orientation because uh, they affect very much the spread of the, of the infection. As I've just mentioned, no one uh, knows whether COVID-19 will subside or we will live with. Uh, second thing, those people, although uh, in individually you can feel that they have a minor contribution, but due to their size and what they do, they are um, key players in some industries, as I've just mentioned, like construction, uh, transportation, um, or um, yes, transportation mainly, uh, and not, um, um, and, and actually, if we look to the construction, we can see the size of those people. After COVID-19, we, we need to have a closer look on their orientation, uh, on, their, uh, on how to make them perform according to the standards which, uh, as we will get through, as the health and safety and environment, the HSE is now uh, a critical as uh, legal, uh, as critical as the legal and the, uh, the legal uh, comply and compliance and business ethics. Coming after that, L&D, definitely L&D is transformed through COVID-19 um, with, uh, with a, a fast, from my point of view, a fast switch from providers and organizations to online rather than to face, to compensate for face-to-face, -face, which I believe uh, uh, didn't compensate that much, but it got the, be uh, good, got the best out of COVID-19. This is one of the parts of the PNO that will, uh, after COVID-19, will not get back, but we will have a balanced approach uh, between face-to-face -face and online, but a lot of uh, 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 learning and development activities which went online will continue online, uh, especially with different packages like uh, uh, on, uh, webinars that, as the one that we have, which maintains a bit of uh, human to human uh, communication. Uh, the blended approach where um, uh, we have a journey, uh, the, uh, the employee or uh, the learner goes for an e learning modules which he attend and, uh, and study, and then uh, virtual sessions, uh, and also. So uh, part he does uh, like assignments and projects um, or online sessions as it's all, all done. The favor that uh, COVID-19 showed in the online, the individualization that we all need to have and also um, its availability whenever. This will definitely uh, two traits uh, that will continue and people will capitalize on after COVID-19 where for example, salespeople can learn whenever from their iPads, mobile phones, uh, and also they can, uh, their managers can track what, how much they learn, what do they learn, uh, and definitely they can tailor their own programs online. Uh, uh, 
also what appeared very much to COVID-19, the need for an in-house expert, which some people before COVID-19 questioned, like people thought were thinking, you know, uh, as long as we have an online platform, which is supported by a strong uh, um, organization or platform, we do not need to have an, an in-house expert. Through COVID-19, and I believe it will continue after COVID-19, the in-house expert role will be more critical yet in different way. Like for example, in, um, in different, uh, like for example, the in-house experts will help to design uh, the blended education experience uh, they will design whatever provided online according to the uh, sp specific needs of each and every organization. Actually, they will play a critical role in guiding and coaching um, employees on what to learn and what do they really need to learn. Definitely also they will consult and coach the managers uh, on how to manage the learning of their employees and not mentioning providing a lot of analytics, uh, which I'm fond of, uh, to the management and uh, uh, the, the management the, uh, and the management teams about the needs of the organizations and definitely the competency profile of organizations. Moving after that to rewards, as we mentioned, um, as we used to study that uh, M, uh, values are the basic of organizations. I believe it's uh, um, rewarding will be uh, one of the reflections of the straightening up of the organizational values. So it's now will be a moment of truth for the people and organization team to see whether uh, are we gonna continue rewarding performance only or also we will reward the values. It's getting back to human. It's getting back to our, what do we as organizations really believe in? What are our values? Because now our values are clear. Uh, this was proved through our conduct in COVID-19 and it will continue after that we need to straighten up our rewarding system according to the value, the real values that we should and we want the organization to continue uh, with. Uh, after that, the major question that we used to, uh, to ask, uh, and it was also overlooked, are they engaged? And a lot of organizations that I used to consult, uh, I used to have a lot of surveys that was just filled for the sake of checklist. Uh, through COVID-19, we could see the value of engaged employees with a, um, uh, with a lot of employees whom are engaged, who are performing, although they are stressed, they are with their kids at home, um, they are locked down, they are not secure. Um, it showed the value of engagement, and I believe uh, the value of engagement will be uh, established after that and seeking the engagement of our employees. Um, and definitely, how, how, how are we gonna engage them? Are we engaging them from our point of view? Uh, like, as an, I, I could see uh, one of the organizations that used to, used to engage people uh, with the uh, fat paychecks. Um, and uh, which was the answer for some people but not all, all people. Uh, now maybe replacing most uh, um, um, contributing by I think we're experiencing another connection drop. Uh, George? I think George was disconnected, Yamai. If you can please reconnect him. 
again or insert into the room. Sure. Thank you. George, are you back? Can you unmute me, please? George. Yep. Can you hear yes. us? Can okay. you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, uh, again, this is part of uh, another live example of how network can go on, uh, 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 which actually is uh, something that we face. Uh, and I think we'll continue, uh, and we need to continue having a look on uh, uh, as people and organization because making people working remotely needs an infrastructure of technology uh, that we need to work on. Uh, this includes uh, coverage. This includes uh, mobile devices. Uh, an organization that I'm consulting uh, on 2013 due to the, the revolution, uh, the VP uh, took a decision uh, to get laptops for all employees, which was mocked by management team uh, at that time. Uh, but I believe now they are thanking him uh, for this because people could switch in a couple of hours or overnight to working from home. Uh, uh, this is part of the thing that we need to work on uh, furthermore and uh, as, uh, as, as uh, people and organizations how to work with other functions to establish and give people um, the tools and uh, the facilities so that they can work from home uh, <clears throat> easily and smoothly. Finally, another overlooked uh, area in the people and organization uh, uh, which we used to, uh, to overlook actually uh, uh, at one time, uh, uh, part of uh, at one time in my uh, career, I was responsible for the HSE, uh, HSE, which is the Health, Safety, and Environment in one of the organizations. Uh, it was a European organization. And uh, I kept receiving a lot of questions, a lot of, you know, uh, data required about the emission of the carbon dioxide from cars, the safety of the uh, building, uh, the cleanness of the building. And at that time, uh, it was nagging. And uh, I myself felt that, you know, it's too much. I believe now, HSE, uh, now and after COVID-19, it will take a decision-making, or let's say it like this, critical decision-making uh, position, and not only in the organization, but in the continu business continuity of the whole organization. Uh, this, because, uh, uh, I don't know whether you came through this or not, but the, the MOH, the Ministry of Health, yesterday uh, released uh, a guide uh, for coping with COVID-19, which requires uh, certain requirements uh, that the HSE needs to, to overlook sanitation, um, which uh, sanitation uh, uh, workforce um, uh, factories needs to work uh, every shift by 30% of its capability to maintain distancing. Uh, and it's a no kidding business now, like if uh, it was investigated uh, uh, and uh, more than those workers are found in the facility, I think they are fined with uh, a fat check, fat paycheck. Uh, also, uh, we are talking about in, in sanitation, we are talking about um, um, different, uh, a serious budget uh, in one of the organizations that I worked for, HSE was like, uh, you know, the safety box in the budget on the estimate, like you put in it money. Uh, so so there, if there is any shortage in any aspect of the operations, you can take from the HSE. Now we need to be serious with the budget of HSE um, because uh, one of the organizations that I consult, um, uh, as they had budget uh, in overnight, uh, 
they installed the sanitizers at the door of meeting rooms. Uh, they provided gloves, alcohol, uh, hand, sanit uh, hand sanitizers for each and every employee. Uh, they shifted uh, the access uh, to, the, to the facility to an infrared uh, access card rather than uh, a fingerprint or uh, even code. Uh, HSE will set the norms for all these things. Also, this means that uh, the, the guy, uh, definitely this will continue after COVID-19, if not increased, because what we could see now affecting the health and safety is a virus. We do not know what comes after. Like, uh, I imagine certain type of plastics that we used to use, uh, that after a time, we'll find out that it causes certain diseases and we need to deal with it cautiously. And this reflects on another part of uh, uh, the sanitation, which is a guy who is will be responsible for this needs to be an expert rather than an admin. And this is another part that was overlooked before. I believe in COVID, after COVID-19, it will be by far more maximized. Like uh, this entails two things. A guy who is responsible for what you call the industrial safety. Again, I'm not talking about COVID-19 itself. We're talking about after COVID-19 and being preventive from other things that uh, we used to overlook or to underestimate. Uh, um, second thing, um, validating and emphasizing the role of an in-house uh, health worker. Um, before COVID-19, this was used to be a nurse or a doctor who comes for a couple of days. Uh, after COVID-19, this guy will be, I believe, it will be at least a GP in the, in the factory or in, uh, in, in the facility, depending on the size of the facility. And, um, and again, he will be empowered. Uh, for instance, he can send an employee home with no uh, word from his manager. Um, there was a known case in one of, uh, uh, of a COVID-19 positive patient uh, in one of the factories in Egypt in March. Uh, the guy came to the to the in to the in factory or the in house uh, healthcare uh, professional who was uh, luckily an experienced doctor, and the guy came with a diarrhea. Uh, his doctor didn't even um, 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 uh, examine him. He sent him home and he said to him, that will send you the healthcare at home. This guy proved to be COVID-19 positive, him and his wife. And thanks for this doctor, uh, when this factory was quarantined, no one came positive while the, the worker died and I heard lately that his wife also died from COVID-19. It's a real serious business. Health and safety uh, and environment is getting uh, more, uh, more, more and more and more and more critical and it will get more critical. As I've just mentioned, uh, the HSE uh, guy uh, can close a factory or can close a facility from working. Um, definitely another part of the HSE, uh, which is the facility management. The facilities, uh, 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 people will not, uh, when after COVID-19, will, will not be back sitting close to each other or having their lovely coffee break in the coffee, COVID, coffee break area. Uh, actually, there is a lot of scenarios for this. Some people will say that they will go into shifts, like I'll go today to work, uh, and uh, tomorrow my, clo my colleague will go and I'll stay home. If not shifting to uh, working remotely, uh, definitely this uh, uh, gets also on a part that is taken care of by health and safety, which is the facility management. Uh, so after COVID-19, uh, people may shift totally to a zero brick and mortar facility, which is adopted by some companies worldwide and they are functioning like this for years. Um, 
uh, again, the guy for the administration and health and safety, if there'll be uh, the responsibility of one person by himself, will be a key player into this uh, providing facility uh, for people to work with the social distancing and spacing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that's it from my side. I'll leave uh, a room for more questions. Uh, send it to Shireen, and I'll be glad to hear your insights sailing, uh, learning while you are sailing. Okay, thank you, George, very much. We have uh, a couple of questions here. Um, first question is asking, what is the HR perspective should we deal with after COVID-19 within all the sectors that we are talking about today? Uh, I didn't get the question, Shireen. What Let me check HR, and tell me. What is the HR perspective that we should deal with after COVID-19 within all the sectors that we are talking about today? Okay. Uh, actually, HR is, is, is the leader of all these. Like HR, uh, P&O, uh, he needs to stand with uh, the management team to see what do we really believe in. As implicit values um, and keeping it uh, will not get the organization anything the structure uh, some organization pno is the leader of the annual uh, uh, annual planning uh, or at least a strategic partner in uh, with the trends as uh, remote working remotely and virtual teams how do we see the team size and span of control uh, how we ha what is your proposal balancing centralized versus uh, uh, autonomous teams definitely goes for hiring we do the hiring uh, uh, the selection package you need to think of more online skills while hiring people uh, uh, definitely the pre career you need to to think of how those people are oriented maybe they are not they are not only skillful but you need to look for people who are skilled and aware because one person uh, can get you COVID-19 at, the, at the door. L&D, uh, definitely man, P&O guy, you are the leader of the L&D. Uh, are you an expert or will you hire an expert? How you will manage the, the L&D online? Because uh, put in consideration something uh, online may, be, uh, may get people hooked in and logged in, but this doesn't mean that they learn. Definitely rewarding. What's your report, uh, proposal for rewarding value? or still performance and no value killing the values of the organization. Uh, as a PNO person, how are you, what is your plan uh, to engage people? Really, are they really engaged? Is your survey reflective? HSE, with all we've mentioned, man, you will be the leader of this. Will you get an expert? Do you need an in-house healthcare uh, uh, expert? Uh, maybe you need to stop a lot of activities uh, to get budget for the HSE that is reflective of the needs. This, this we can stretch it for like a course or a course, I mean like eight sessions for discussion, not mentioning planning. All this slide is the role of the PNO to lead. The second okay, question. Thank you, George. Please. Yes, thank you, George. Uh, the coming questions, what are the competencies required to hire new employees fitting our organizations with the current pandemic? Okay, uh, definitely uh, we need to think of what your organization requires now. Like for example, uh, if you are a production, uh, production organization mainly, uh, you need to think of people's orientation on, on uh, orientation and the health san uh, personal sanitization thing. Uh, I know it's a bit, it, it seems clumsy, but it can save your organization. Uh, what's on the top of my head? How much people are autonomous? Like uh, uh, how do, how will they work? This is part their character more than the competency. Okay. Uh, so I'll go for characters and then competency. Uh, how much they can work without their manager picking on them because at a time uh, we can shift working from home or from the start we can be working from home. 
definitely online like what they call online like likeness competencies how much this guy can perform online uh, because as as we faced here uh, uh, a lot of people uh, sorry um, it, it can be interrupted uh, this is not by the way because of egypt i had a session with people in dubai in abu dhabi actually uh, which is with less traffic than dubai and it got it, it got interrupted uh, other things including uh, uh, what is the purpose of this person this definitely comes what comes on the top of my head uh, what is why this guy is joining the organization and this is a question that when we asked people or we, we thought of when hiring, we thought like, you know, this is very utopian. Uh, the funny thing, the belief of people, what keeps them engaged and this will what will get you performance while working remotely, which I believe will stay for a time. Uh, uh, also how people, uh, their emotional intelligence, because uh, I could see a lot of people under the stress that we faced in March, uh, panicked, collapsed, uh, getting more uh, more exaggerated result, uh, actions. So how people uh, are um, uh, emotionally managing themselves and consequently managing them their teams and how they can uh, collaborate with teams remotely. Uh, that's what's, what's on the top of my head. Okay, thank you, George. Um... Another question was how the people and organization will help in providing clarity while there is no clarity in the horizon. Communicate the unclarity. Uh, uh, um, it's being honest and uh, being honest and trustworthy. Um, I've been uh, one of the organizations that I uh, am consulting. Uh, led a mega change like restructuring this before this before COVID-19 and when we were talking to the XCOM the executive the committee out there uh, I, I can recall a meeting that they said we do not know where this change will land and at first I felt you know what what's the heck sorry for the word uh, they need to have a fixed plan but after a time, when I thought of it, those people are transparent, those people I'd like to work with. So firstly, communicate openly with transparency. Even the things that you cannot tell, say that I'm, I'm, I'm not authorized, we do not have something fixed till now. But because by the way, um, due to the uncertainty that the whole world is in, a lot of knowledge is there, people can detect the trends, uh, people can see, for example, that the Egyptian market is moving into reopening gradually. Uh, so be honest and open. Um, and so, something more technical, keep the communication channel for the whole organization as much as you can clear for what is re uh, for working after COVID-19. For example, uh, I'm saying this because one of the organizations that I'm consulting, um, the headquarters communicated to the... Uh, to the branches that no communi communication other than related to COVID-19 and uh, after COVID-19 is allowed for the whole organization by emails. I mean, if you want to communicate something related to learning, send it to people, uh, people managers only. So they kept the organization, um, uh, like communication for the whole organization open for uh, co uh, COVID and after COVID. Uh, this is something technical. Uh, get people's vibes. Uh, uh, like uh, how people are responding uh, so that you adjust your plan uh, uh, with agility uh, because the response of people is totally different from one organization to the other, from one sector to the other. Thank you. Okay, uh, another question regarding learning and development. Uh, do you believe that organizations are willing to invest in training during the coming period? Um, uh, actually, this is this is a question that is it differs from one organization to the other. With the online, uh, actually, a lot of organizations uh, started and invested a lot of money through COVID, and it will continue for, uh, on the online learning. Um, after COVID nineteen, uh, there will be wise. Let me say like this: wise investment 
and the time allocation in general of all workforce because all people um, uh, organization that i'm consulting uh, the vp communicated that let's let's be wise in our time allocation after we get back because we need we have only half a year like june uh, till the end to, uh, to compensate for our performance that dropped due to the lockdown this includes time allocated to training uh, this means that uh, the trend of online will be uh, will be uh, established and increased. Uh, the size of the investment depends on the organization, but definitely there will be an investment in the online training. Okay, another question is that you had mentioned uh, that there will be new skills and online skills. Uh, yes. The participant is asking, can you elaborate more on these skills? Yes, firstly, um, uh, how, to, uh, how to manage teams remotely through different platforms, because uh, as easy as it may, uh, may, may seem, but tell me, it's, uh, it's, it's a whole different story. Uh, I believe a lot of our participants went through it, uh, and it's totally different from one platform to the other, like Microsoft Teams is different than Adobe Connect, is different than web to go is different than Webex, uh, is different than Zoom. Um, this is uh, one skill. Second thing, how to facilitate a meeting, uh, online uh, virtual meeting, which is a bit different than what I've just mentioned, like uh, just uh, calling for a meeting, uh, hearing some updates and then go home. Uh, final thing, how to facilitate virtual sessions. I'm taking it a bit like, more complicated virtual sessions and trainings. Uh, this requires a certain certification, which is uh, costly now. Uh, uh, this is something. Uh, also, there are skills like how to work remotely using different devices. Uh, uh, for example, um, uh, I take a lot of meetings uh, via phone, uh, which requires awareness with the uh, uh, mobile device uh, and it's uh, the app on it and also sometimes as we are having the webinar uh, webinar now i having more than one facility or more than one than one device that i need to sync with like i'm taking it from uh, from a device i have my uh, my own ipad uh, i'm communicating with shirin through the whatsapp on one of my phones uh, this is something uh, also uh, concerning the skills there is um, in the virtual uh, meet Things, especially trainings, there is a, a job that is called the producer. The producer is something like the real director of the, uh, of the session, uh, as Shireen is graciously doing, um, who is taking care of connectivity, who is in, uh, if and on, in an organization, for example, uh, where we know by name, like, uh, uh, not by name, like uh, who from which department, and we have their phone numbers. Uh, uh, she communicates with them to make sure that they are connected. If we have breakout rooms, she sends people into breakout rooms. Uh, she takes questions. Um, uh, she can draw, get a poll up like uh, uh, a questionnaire and stuff. Uh, also, there is a different uh, usage of different online facilities like uh, Menti. Uh, Menti is uh, menti.com is a, a website that gives you the facility of having an online poll. Uh, there is Nearpod, where you can, um, uh, people share uh, like thoughts and it comes up like post-its post on, online. Um, how to manage all these things, uh, as simple as it appears, it's really critical because uh, what we face till now of uh, issues with the connectivity is nothing. Uh, I had uh, before uh, a training session for people in Middle Africa, uh, in Middle Africa. Middle Africa is the Sub-Saharan area. Sub-Saharan area is 48 countries. So uh, you imagine 48 countries with 48 connecti connections, uh, not mentioning languages, not mentioning maintaining uh, their engagement. It's okay, a whole I different world, have, my friend. Uh, well, I think we have time for two more questions. Uh, okay. Another question is, does the current pandemic open the door for new performance man measurement techniques, depending on jobs? And is it for the L&D a positive, negative, or just uncertain situation? Uh, 
uh, I'll take the first part and I, I need more expansion on the second part. Definitely, we need to change our approach to performance as you've just mentioned. If I'm gonna uh, uh, measure, uh, if you are talking about technical parts and softwares and stuff, uh, definitely, because uh, uh, the pandemic showed that um, maybe showed a, a fact that we usually overlooked. We thought that if you are staying, Shireen is staying in her office and I'm her boss, and I'm keep co going on back and forth, uh, checking with her, seeing th uh, that her nose, sorry, Shireen, or her face stuck in the computer. Uh, this means that she is working. This proved uh, to be wrong because we are working now more on people's engagement and people's uh, uh, putting their heart in what they do. So we need to think of performance in a different way, as I've just mentioned. Um, uh, I want to check with um, the participant that mentioned the, uh, the question of the LND. Uh, do you mean that uh, LND is going to be extinct? Uh, do, you, uh, do you mean this? Okay, we will wait for him to answer this. Uh, okay. In the meantime, uh, we have another question. Somebody was asking, uh, when you were discussing employees' engagement, uh, mm. Did you mean employees empowerment? Is it the same thing? Uh, there is a lot of def definitions concerning uh, employee, uh, employee engagement. Uh, I like to put it that simple. What, uh, what makes George puts all his heart in what he is doing? Like, uh, for example, what makes uh, um, Hussein, I'm, I'm taking a, whatever name, Sorry if there is a Hussein with the participants, but what makes Hussein in Ramadan working remotely uh, works till five uh, or before uh, iftar while he is fasting with no manager seeing him. He can keep the laptop uh, open, connected. He is available and, uh, and that's it. This is engagement. Okay. Uh, uh Another question, is there any expectations with the new area of business that will be generated after COVID-19? Definitely. Uh, whatever is online is flourishing. George? George, can you hear us? George, can you hear us? Okay. Um, I think we lost the connection again. Uh, George, we cannot hear you, yeah, George. George, can I think we lost the connection and it's already three. So I think we can wrap up, Shireen. Now? Yes, sure, May. Um, I think we lost the connection with George and it's already three o'clock, so it's time for us to... Um, I just wanted to thank you all for attending today's session. And uh, please stay tuned uh, with us for our coming set of webinar series. Um, the link for today's session is going to be sent to you. Uh, the recorded session is going to be sent via email. And um, thank you all and stay tuned. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.